video I'll be working through 2018 level 2 waves paper question 3 Oof, it's a long word. Ah, uh, long wording. Sophie decided to investigate the difference between AM and FM waves. She knew they both uh, that both are radio waves that travel at the speed of light and can travel large distances. An important difference she discovered was the size of their wavelength. So Sophie's favourite AM radio station transmitted waves with a wavelength of 550 metres, whereas her favourite FM uh, station transmitted waves with a 3.3 meter wavelength, wavelength, amplitude are properties of these waves. On the diagram below, mark the wavelength and amplitude of, or mark, mark the wavelength and amplitude. So wavelength is just when the pattern repeats itself. As you can see, this is a pattern. It just repeats and repeats and repeats. Um, so where it repeats, if we start here, so there's where it starts repeating. So that is one wavelength. The amplitude is the size of the wave. Um, so I'll just chuck it over here from the equilibrium point, so the, from, from the center up is the amplitude. Also, Sophie must be from the 1950s because what teenager I have never met listens to AM radio. It's usually old people that listen to that. Anyway, enough of me rambling. At home, Sophie's radio could detect one of the radio stations even though the hill was between her house and the transmitter. Right, so at home, Sophie's radio could detect one of the radio stations even though the hill was between her house and the transmitter. Um, the diagram, oh, this can be modeled using the diagram below. So you've got transmitter, house, hill in the middle, um, radio waves, um, and the hill. Right, I'm going to fill this picture in just for brevity. Um, assuming these are kind of large, what ends up happening is you sort of get these radio waves that, oh, how do I do this? They sort of go to here, and then you get this sort of, diffraction pattern like that and that should be sort of flat it kind of looks like that ish um, bit messy but yeah so that's called diffraction um, so you look at this name the phenomenon that happens uh, that allows this to happen stay with the AM or FM station is most likely detected at the home give a reason for your answer so I'll just write the answer Right, so I said diffraction, larger wavelengths diffract more, so AM is likely to be detected. Um, I'll just double check this. This is an AB, so this is probably a mirror, and this is probably a mirror, and the next one's probably an excellence. Um, I feel like this is not enough for mirror. Uh, right. Um, right, next question. To listen to her favorite radio station, so if you use her favorite op uh, used her fiber optic cable internet connection. The music is encoded as light pulses, which are either on or off or binary. Um, to show what happens when two pulses are sent through a fiber optic cable in opposite directions, a simplified diagram is presented below. Each pulse travels three squares horizontally every time period. Um, draw the resulting super, superposition uh, on the diagram below after one time period. So they're both moving at the exact same speed. So all we need to do is shuffle this box. So we'll just how do we do this? We get start of this one, we shuffle him three periods. So one, two, three. So it'd be like three, you know, boxes he's moved in, a, in one time period. So he, if I want to translate this down, that box would be there. So I'm going to just draw a real light dotted line across like that there. Really like just so I can sort of barely see it. Right, so that's the first one after it's translated three boxes to the left. This little fella here, he's two boxes high, um, same as this one here. He's gonna go three left as well, so he's gonna go one, two, three. So his start will be there, and that'll be what he looks like. He'll sort of go in like this. So I need to, he, if I translate straight down, will be here. But because we've got these two boxes here, they're kind of like Lego, or like, more like Tetris. Um, they stack up upon, upon each other, so it'll look like that. And then what we do is we get our ruler, and we uh, ink it in. And then I'll just do this, do the vertical lines first, because it's easier. And we're gonna chuck that across like that. How we can see that. There we go. So that is the superposition, aka adding the waves together. After one time period, use a ruler, because be neat, don't be messy. Right, last question. In another place, Sophie decides to try and make a radio signal, make the radio signal strength stronger by using two FM transmitter aerials, A and B, plus 6.6 .6 meters apart. 
Sophie needs to know where the <coughs> resultant signal will be strongest or weakest. What the heck? On the diagram below, not to scale, mark one point where the resultant signal will be a maximum. That'll be the anti-node, and where it'll be the minimum, mark why that'll be the node. Comprehensively explain why these points result in different strength signals. So on the actual exam that I have here, um, they are actually coloured. Um, and you can see I've marked it because obviously I do the exam so I have something to reference when I'm making these videos. They're coloured red and green. Um, so I might just use that just so you can sort of see. You've The red, um, what are the red? Reds are peaks, greens are troughs. Um, so where you have a peak and a trough meet, like here, there's a, or well, this is a peak and a peak. So if I reference to mine, um, a peak and a peak here, that's an X. Um, that'll be an antinode, because it's asking point X is the maximum. And where a green, I hope you can see the colors, I'm sure you can see the colors. This is where a green and a red line meet up. Um, this will be a node, because when you have a peak and a trough, so a top and a bottom, add together you get no wave whatsoever. It's kind of like over the previous page we had those two um, waves coming in. If it was one on the bottom, one on the top, they'd cancel out. So that is that. So I'm going to refer to my one here. There is my Y. Um, yeah, it's kind of annoying that this didn't print in colour, even though the rest of the paper's in colour. What? I have no idea why. Anyway, but you can see it's sort of there, hopefully. Right. Explanations. Um, comprehensively explain why these points result in different strength signals. Right, I'll pause, write both answers, and then I'll discuss. Right, so what I've said is the amplitude will be maximum as the path difference is zero, so both waves will arrive in phase constructively interfere, giving maximum amplitude. So there's a lot of fancy words in there. When I say path difference, I just mean the distance from a, so if you like go, if you started from A and went to X, and if you started from B and went to X, the distance between those two points um, would be, well in this case it's exactly the same, um, but it would be a whole number of waves. So it would be three whole waves to here and three whole waves to here. If you went like over here, if I choose, chose, oop, chose this point over here, this is also X, here would be four waves, here would be three waves. I don't actually know if that's the case. It's probably like two waves, three waves. Whatever, my point still stands. The difference is a whole number. However, Y, it's one and a half waves from here, but it's like three waves from here. So the difference is a half. Well, it's actually like two and a half, but whatever. So it's, it's the half difference. So the, the path difference at X is zero, so it makes it a lot easier for us. So both waves will arrive from phase. When I say arrive in phase, it just means they're in the same sort of phase. So if they're both going up at the same time, they're both going down at the same time. They constructively, you know what that mean, word means, interfere means they add together, giving maximum amplitude. Um, you could also have two troughs. Maximum amplitude can be maximum downwards or maximum upwards. Um, the amplitude will be minimum as, so at point Y, the amplitude will be minimum as there a path difference of, and I've written sort of the actual formula, um, it's N minus a half. N is just how many waves you took to get there, times a the wavelength. Um, so that tells you, or N is just a, a number. If you times it by the wavelength, it gives you the actual distance. Because if it's like four waves and the wavelength's two meters, four times two gives you eight whole meters to get there. Um, so we've got a path difference of sort of a half a wave, the waves will be out of phase exactly, causing destructive interference, giving minimum amplitude.